Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Lord. We've got uh, two short passages from the scriptures this morning. Um, first from Acts chapter 1, verses 1 to 11, and then Matthew 28, verses 16 to 20. They really both cover the same incident, the same period of time, a little bit more in Acts chapter 1 than in Matthew, but it's really all to do with the ending of Jesus' ministry here on earth. So, uh, Acts chapter 1, verses 1 to 11, and maybe someone could read that for us in French. Cher Théophile, dans mon premier livre, j'ai parlé de tout ce que Jésus a commencé de faire et d'enseigner jusqu'au jour où il a été enlevé au ciel, après avoir donné ses ordres par le Saint-Esprit aux apôtres qu'il avait choisis. Après avoir souffert, il se présenta à eux vivants et leur en donna de nombreuses preuves. Pendant quarante jours, il se montra à eux et parla de ce qui concerne le royaume de Dieu. Alors qu'il s'est trouvé en leur compagnie, il leur recommanda de ne pas s'éloigner de Jérusalem, mais d'attendre ce que le Père avait promis. Ce que je vous ai annoncé, leur dit-il, car Jean a baptisé d'eau, mais vous, dans peu de jours, vous serez baptisés du Saint-Esprit. Ok, so we can have this page then in English. Then they gathered around him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside him. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? The same Jesus, who has been taken from you into heaven, will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. And these few verses in French again, please. There's someone else. Les onze disciples allèrent en Galilée, sur la montagne que Jésus leur avait désignée. Quand ils le virent, ils se prosternèrent devant lui, mais quelques-uns eurent des doutes. Jésus s'approcha et leur dit, « Tout pouvoir m'a été donné dans le ciel et sur la terre. Allez donc, faites de toutes les nations des disciples, baptisez-les au nom du Père, du Fils et du Saint-Esprit. Et enseignez-leur à mettre en pratique tout ce que je vous ai prescrit. Et moi, je suis avec vous tous les jours jusqu'à la fin du monde. Merci. Thank you. Great. Well, there's a significance in beginnings and in endings. Um, how something starts off is foundational for how it will continue. And how something finishes is also of vital importance to know. And that's true, I think, particularly of the ministry of the Lord Jesus here on earth. How it began is important. Of course, the whole ministry itself is important. But also, his final words, his final actions are of vital importance for us as followers of him today. Um, and uh, last week we saw the beginning of Jesus' earthly ministry. Uh, Stephen was speaking to us about Jesus' baptism, which was the official marker of the beginning of his ministry at the age of 30. And um, this week we're looking at the end of his ministry here on earth. Although it's interesting, I don't know if you noticed in the, the first 
at verse of Acts chapter 1, Luke says this, he says, In my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach. All that Jesus began to do and to teach. And so what he's saying, really, is that the life and ministry of Jesus on earth really only was in its first stage while he was here on earth. And that the ministry of Jesus continues to this day. He's still alive. He's still working and still moving in power and in salvation. And this really today is about how that is accomplished in the world in the present day and in our lives. Because I want to look at, at three headings today. Good three-point sermon. My, uh, my teacher at college would be proud of me. Um, mind you, he might not be proud of the length that it eventually reach, <laughs> reaches. Um, according to him, a, bit, a good sermon. Three points in 20 minutes. Uh, you can judge whether I make the 20 minutes or not. <laughs> Steve's timing me. <laughs> anyway, it called, sent, and equipped. And that's what we see happening here with the disciples, the first disciples of Jesus. They were called by Jesus, they were sent by him, and they were equipped by him for that. Um, we read about the initial call of the disciples back in, in Mark chapter 3. You don't need to worry about uh, it's just a couple of verses here where it says, Jesus went up on a mountainside and called to him those he wanted, and they came to him. He appointed twelve. So these twelve, minus Judas, who by this time had hanged himself, were the ones that it's talking about in the two passages that we read already. These are the disciples that Jesus called. And it's, I think it's so exciting. It says he called to him those he wanted. And do you know that if you've heard the call of Jesus and responded to it in your life, it's because Jesus wanted you. He wants, he wants each of us to respond to him. He wants each of us to come and to follow him. To hear his voice today. To know that we are called just like those first disciples were called. And he called these disciples, first of all, to be with him. Everywhere he went from then on, virtually, those twelve were with him. And he calls us today to be with him. To have fellowship with him. To know him personally. And uh, to just spend time with him. He calls us into relationship with him. They call them also to learn from him. You know, the, the whole process of being a disciple uh, it was, was something very special. It wasn't just about head knowledge. It wasn't just about learning facts and figures. It wasn't about passing exams. We put so much emphasis on these sort of things in our day. Gaining qualifications on paper. Or electronically stored nowadays, isn't it? But Jesus calls us to be disciples. People who get to know him, who learn from him about how to live who watch what he does and do the same things. That's what a disciple did. He or she would watch their master, not just listen, but watch as well, and copy, do the things that the master did. You know, a few years ago, some of you may remember, there were um, these wristbands that you could get, often multi-coloured, 
very, yeah, the, they, they went round your, your wrist, obviously, as a wristband would, um, and they had WWJD on them. What would Jesus do? And they were very, very popular for a while. Um, all the young people particularly wore them. Uh, because I wasn't young, I didn't have one. Um, but the, the, the message is there. What would Jesus do? And that's what a disciple studies. A person of Jesus, his life, his way of doing things. And a disciple seeks to, to be like him. And that's the, the ultimate aim. So to be with Jesus, to learn from Jesus, to become like Jesus. And for at the end of that process, or even as that process is going on, he gives to us, as those who have heard his call, particular roles, particular giftings. So it's not a case of producing a whole load of puppets who all look the same and do the same. But it's producing a band, a body of people in whom the Spirit of God lives and the life of Jesus is expressed in different ways according to our personalities, in different uh, situations according to where our lives have brought us. And even when it comes down to um, a particular calling, for instance, like preaching, you'll find there are differences between different preachers. You only have to come here Sunday by Sunday to see there are differences between the different preachers. That doesn't mean that some are better than others. It just means that our different personalities and our different giftings are expressed differently. But they're all given by Jesus, all in response to his call, and all for the benefit of his people. So, first thing we see here is that these disciples were called. And we need to know that we too, each one of us who has put our trust in Jesus here, each one of us is called by him. But, going on from there, they weren't just called, they were sent. The word apostle in the Greek is apostolos, not very different. And it means someone who is sent. So Jesus called these people with the purpose of sending them out. And that's what he does for us as well. In the, the original call in Mark 3, it says he appointed 12 designating them apostles that they might be with him and that he might send them out to preach the gospel. So his specific aim in calling us is to send us to make us his agents in the world today. He says to the disciples and he says to us through his word, you will be my witnesses. A witness is somebody who tells what they have seen or what they have experienced. And it's because we've been with Jesus and we've been able to see what he's doing, because we've seen what he's done in our lives, that we can then tell others about him and about his work. He says to them, go into all the world and make disciples. He gives them a commission. And if you go on through the book of Acts, and we may do a little bit of that in the coming weeks, if you go on through the book of Acts, you see the way in which these apostles responded to that and went into their world to make Jesus known. In the same way, he calls us today to go into our world and to make him known. For some of us, that will be in a relatively limited area geographically. For others, it might be further afield. For some of us, it will be with uh, 
the, the specific role of preaching, teaching, leading for others, it will be something else that he has for us to do. But he's got something, some way, that he wants to use us, each one of us. No one else can do what you are called to do. You alone are called to that. And you alone are sent out by Jesus to accomplish that. And of course, there's an enemy who would whisper in our ears and say, oh, you're not worthy. You're not able. You can't do this. But remember, he's the father of lies. And so if he's saying that, that's a lie, so we can disregard it. If Jesus says to us, you will be my witnesses. His word is true. And you can believe it. And you can seek him for how he wants to work that out in your life. Because he has something particular for you. I love those words from the book of Esther. When the, the Jews are threatened with being wiped out. And Mordecai says to, to Esther, who's the queen of the, of the empire. Sorry, Nikki. So Mordecai says to Esther, who's his niece and the queen of the empire, he says, you've got a particular role to play in this situation. You are probably uh, the best placed person to save your people at this point. And he says to her, who knows but what God has called you to the kingdom for such a time as this. You and I have been called into the kingdom of God for this time in which we live. Just as much as Esther was in her day. And we are being sent into the world by Jesus. They were called. They were sent. We are called. We are sent. But they were also equipped. And this is really important. Jesus says to them in, in Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And he says in Matthew 28 verse 18. All authority in heaven and on earth is given to me. So go out in my name. If we try to serve God in our own strength and by our own abilities, it's going to be a disaster. We're going to come a cropper because we don't have the ability in ourselves. Paul says, I can do nothing in my own strength. And that's true of all of us because we're all flawed. But he goes on, he says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. All the resources that were available to Jesus, this might sound a bit controversial. You can argue with me afterwards if you want. Um, all the resources that were available to Jesus for his life and ministry are available to us. So that we can serve him today. And that's because Jesus is alive. Jesus is at the right hand of the Father. And he has sent his spirit just as he promised. So that we can receive that power, that authority, that enabling. By his spirit in us. You know, sometimes we can think of the baptism of the Holy Spirit or the, the outpouring of the Spirit upon disciples in a very self-centered sort of way. It's all about what I want. It's all about me being filled. It's all about me experiencing God in a new way. It's all about me being refreshed. 
You see something wrong there. It's not all about me. It's all about him. And uh, the empowering of the Holy Spirit is to enable us to live for him effectively and in his resources. Sometimes also we, we think about or we talk about uh, when we were baptized in the Holy Spirit or when we were filled with the Holy Spirit. One off event X number of years ago um, and that's it. But the problem with that is as the uh, man who kept coming up for prayer to be filled with the Holy Spirit said when he was asked why do you keep coming up to, for prayer for the Holy Spirit? He says, because I leak. And we all leak. And we need a fresh experience, a fresh anointing, a fresh filling of the Holy Spirit. In Ephesians 5, 18, Paul says, go on being filled with the Holy Spirit. It says, it's something that we need constantly to be renewed and refreshed in that experience of God not just so that we'll feel good although we will but so that we can be empowered to serve him whatever the cost so the, these first apostles were called by Jesus set apart by him to follow him they were sent out by Jesus into the world that surrounded them to make disciples of all nations. And they were equipped by Jesus through the Spirit of God to do that task. The same calling, the same sending, the same equipping are for us in our day. I encourage you to seek God, to know what are you calling me to do? That you'd seek God to know where are you sending me? To whom are you sending me? And that you would seek God ultimately to be filled with that power, that ability, that enabling that only he can give but that he delights to give to those who seek him. Father, thank you for your love for us. Thank you that through Jesus you have called us into your kingdom for such a time as this. Thank you for the promise of your enabling as you send us out. Help us to hear your voice. Help us to know your empowering. May we be your witnesses in our world today for your glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You didn't look at your watch? I did. Oh, you did? Oh, no. <laughs> I'll give you a written report later. <laughs> On the time. Thank you, Derek. It's so simple, isn't it? You shall be my witnesses, etc. Mm. The hard bit is doing it. <laughs> that is the hard bit, actually, to get out there yeah. and be witnesses to Jesus. Mm -hmm. Say what we've seen, what we know. But that's the challenge. Where we are. And there's about 30 of us in the room. And that diversifies us over quite an area around here. Mm. Lots of opportunities. Let's pray for them. We want to go back to a song that is uh, pretty old. It hasn't been, well, it's not as old, it's no older than some of the others we sing. Um, but it hasn't been, and I haven't sung it for probably 15 to 20. 20 years. 1986. It was written, yes. Yeah, copyright <laughs> on the bottom. Yeah. Um, we believe in God the Father. It's 
based on uh, the creed, and it's a Graham Kendrick. Who knows it? We believe in God. Yeah. yeah so we'll sing it through twice. Yeah. It's, yeah. Hang on, hang on. Hang on. Sorry. Mine's on charge while I go. <laughs> concepts there in that song and they're not just concepts they're words we're putting into conceptual form mm. to understand but Father we just pray that we will live that reality in truth and in the power of the spirit being filled keeping on being filled with the spirit mm. To the glory of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Amen.